Hello everyone, Nadim with PC Solutions Net. With a career spanning over four decades in the IT sector, I have both owned and managed several enterprises. My enthusiasm lies in devising innovative IT strategies for small to medium-sized businesses. And I am recognized as an accomplished author of several publications in this domain. Welcome. Today we're going to talk a little bit about mail delivery. You may have heard terms like DKIM, DMAR, SPF, so on and so forth. What do all these mean? Or if you like the video, go ahead and give it a like, thumbs up, and tell all your friends. The YouTube algorithm really loves when more people watch these videos. SPF, DKIM, and DMARC are three tools that can be used to help prevent spoofing and validate email authenticity for your email service or domain. So first let's talk about SPF, which stands for Sender Policy Framework. Before I get started on the diagram that I'm about to show you, just from a high level, SPF is a, a mechanism that tells servers, uh, receiving email servers, what servers are allowed to send mail on behalf of your domain. It uses an SPF record published in DNS to do that. So when you're setting up SPF, you'll publish your SPF record to DNS, uh, to the sending organization's DNS server. And then when an email is sent out from your domain, the receiving server receives it and performs an SPF record lookup by querying DNS for the SPF record of the sending domain to verify whether it came from an authorized uh, sending server or IP address. And then if, if there's no SPF record or if the SPF record of the domain uh, specifies that the server that the message came from was not authorized to send on behalf of that domain, then the message can be rejected or marked as spam. Or if it passes SPF validation, then the message can be accepted for delivery by the receiving email server and then sent uh, placed into the recipient's mailbox. Now, of course, there are some caveats and some other details when configuring SPF, for example, when considering things like um, subdomains, other servers that are allowed to send, such as smart hosts and things like that. But for purposes of this lesson, this uh, will provide a, a good overview. This is what an SPF record looks like. So for example, you can see here the uh, every SPF record starts with a V equals, that's the version number SPF1. They are all, they're all the same. And then, uh, now again, this is a very simplified version of an SPF record. There are a lot of other um, uh, tags and things you can put in an SPF record, but for purposes of, of simplicity, this SPF record specifies the version SPF1, the IP address that is allowed to send mail on behalf of the uh, domain example.com. And then whether all messages uh, should be sent from that specific IP address or if there are some um, exceptions based on smart hosts and things like that. So there, uh, that's where the other, um, there are a variety of other tags and syntax measures that come into play. So as I mentioned, SPF can get a little bit more advanced or actually quite a bit more advanced than that. So there's a lot of good information online, specifically openspf.org is a good resource for how to format your SPF records. There are, you know, as I mentioned, there are other tags and mechanisms that are included in an SPF record. So for example, the, the VSPF that we saw in the SPF record that I showed you, that's always included. Uh, but you can also add some other tags such as a MX record tag, A record tags, and things like that. Uh, and then the, um, the SPF record policy, accept, reject, uh, mark it as uh, spam or questionable or other, other tags that you can add. So this site here has a lot of great information on SPF and how to configure your, uh, your SPF records. So you can refer to this for a more advanced uh, tutorial on SPF. The next tool to help prevent spoofing and uh, tampering with messages is called DKIM, Domain Keys Identified Mail. 
And the way this works is DKIM is a mechanism that signs all outbound messages from a domain with a specific key, uh, we'll call it a, a, a private key, and then a corresponding public key is published to DNS, uh, to the DNS records, and then the receiving server can compare the two keys to see if they match. And I'll explain in this diagram here. So the sending server publishes their public DNS key, uh, their public DKIM to DNS, and then when the sender sends an email, the sending server signs the email with their with the uh, associated private key. The receiving server then sees that the message is signed by DKIM, looks up the DKIM record in DNS taken from the domain that was uh, passed in the DKIM signature of the email message, compares the signature in the email message or the DKIM key in the email message with the uh, public key published to the sending domain's DNS record. And if they match, then the message can be delivered. But if they don't match, then the message is uh, can be quarantined or rejected uh, based on uh, your policies that you have in place. So now that we've discussed DKIM and SPF, let's talk about how DMARC works, because DMARC is a mechanism that kind of ties the two together and allows domain owners to tell receiving domains or receiving mail servers how to handle messages that claim to come from their domain that did not align with DKIM or SPF. And the way this works is the sending organization publishes a DMARC record to DNS. This DMARC record has, uh, I'll show you an example of it, but it explains what to do with messages that failed were, were questionable as whether they passed or failed a DKIM or SPF. You know, for example, quarantine the message or reject the message. So the sending email server sends an email, and then the receiving email server looks at the uh, domain, the, at the sending domain, and first checks SPF for uh, alignment. Then it checks DKIM to verify if the public and private keys match if it is signed by DKIM, and then it checks the DMARC record to determine what to do with messages that uh, did not pass SPF, DKIM, or both. And then if the message is accepted, it is uh, delivered to the recipient's inbox, or it can be rejected based on the sending domain's DMARC policy, or if the sending domain has a policy of quarantine, then the message can be quarantined. And also, an added benefit of DMARC is that you can specify in your DMARC record whether or not you want other mail servers that receive email claiming to come from your domain to be able to send you back reports providing an overview of how your domain is being used. So uh, these are called forensic re reports and aggregate reports. This is an example of a DMARC record and the syntax that is used for the DMARC record. So they all begin with B equals DMARC. They have a P equals tab. And here's a, a key of all the different tags down here in the bottom. So for example, the P equals tag is the policy. And this will say reject or quarantine or none. An optional tag is the percent tag, which tells receiving servers what percentage of messages to handle based on the policy. So a good rule of thumb, for example, when deploying DMARC is to start with a, um, uh, if you start with a policy of none, for example, you don't need a percent tag. But then if you go onto a policy of quarantine or reject, then you can start with a smaller percentage as you get more uh, reports on how your domain is being used. And then if you need to make any changes to how your domain is being used during this time, then having a lower percentage rating here allows fewer messages to be uh, rejected or quarantined, at least until you get your domain uh, nailed down uh, tight with DKIM and SPF. And then once everything is uh, configured properly with DKIM and SPF, in other words, um, your SPF record is um, valid for all sending uh, mail servers or gateways or devices that send on behalf of your domain, and all of your DKIM signed messages are, um, are matched up properly and everything else looks good, then you can ramp up that percentage rating accordingly. There's an RUA tag, which, stand, uh, which is 
the A stands for aggregate, and that's the aggregate report that is sent to an, e an address that you specify here. Usually it's the postmaster. So when you put the RUA tag in your DMARC record, you're telling receiving mail servers where to send aggregate reports, which are reports on how your domain is being used. You also have an RUF tag, which is similar, which is where to send failure reports. These are reports for uh, messages that failed uh, your DMARC that, that weren't aligned with DKIM and SPF based on your DMARC record. And uh, this is the address you can send those failure reports to. So as you can see here, there are a variety of other tags you could put in a uh, DMARC record. So you can find a lot more information on uh, DMARC.org on their website. There are lots of tutorials and lots of uh, uh, resources on how to format your, uh, your DMARC record.